There are five main types of reactions in chemistry. Um, there, are, there are more than five, but these are the five most common uh, types, and we're going to have a video about each one. Their combination, which is also synthesis, then, uh, synthesis means to make, so you're going to be making just one single product. You have decomposition, which kind of is what it sounds. Things are going to be breaking down into smaller products. We have single replacement, double replacement, and then com uh, combustion. So those are going to be the five main types. We're also going to add in uh, what's called a redox reaction um, toward the end as well. Now, some, some chemical reactions can fit into more than one category. And as we start to do some examples, uh, we'll point some of those out. Uh, so sometimes it's not just one answer for a type of reaction. Um, it may actually fit into more than one, which is fine. And the, one of the reasons we want to be able to classify a reaction is because it will help us to be able to predict the type of products that it will that it will make. So if we know what type of reaction it is, that will help us to be able to predict products, which is something that we also need to be able to do in this unit. So let's take a look at our first type of reaction. This is called a combination reaction. Um, also called synthesis reaction. And so what I want you to notice about this one is that it's starting, it's starting out as two separate elements, calcium and sulfur. Um, sometimes it might be two compounds that are being added together, so that's fine. But you do have to have at least two uh, reactants. And then notice your product side, we have one item. So it's not a combination reaction unless there's only one item on your product side and your reactants side needs to have at least two reactants that are being added together. So combination synthesis by definition is two or more substances that react and form a single new substance. And we have another example here is a balanced chemical equation of magnesium and oxygen. Notice that oxygen is a um, diatomic molecule, so we have it written here as O2. And then it becomes magnesium oxide. Now this is a, magnesium's a plus two, oxygen's a minus two, so we need to know our rules for writing formulas and all of that so that we can make sure everything's balanced uh, correctly. So we have two elements, and they react, and they form one compound. So in general, that's kind of a, a combination reaction. Now there's a few different types of combination reactions, depending on the elements that you have. So if we have a metal and a nonmetal, so this is a, just a very simple ionic compound. Potassium is a metal, chlorine is a nonmetal, so it's going to be reacting to form potassium chloride. Okay, we know. Um, how to write ionic compounds. And then, of course, you do need to balance it and make sure that your atoms on each side do balance each other out. Uh, there are times where things can form more than one type of product, and this happens a lot when we have nonmetals. So, sulfur and oxygen are nonmetals, and we know that when we have the nonmetals, we have to use our prefixes, and that's because it can form. Um, just different combinations. So we have sulfur and oxygen forming sulfur dioxide. We also have them combining uh, to form sulfur trioxide. So we have two different possibilities there. And notice each one is, is balanced the way it's written. And then we also have transition metals. And we know transition metals can have um, different um, different charges, excuse me. And so when we have a transition metal with a nonmetal, it would be an ionic compound, but because that transition metal can form, you know, different charges, in this case it's iron with a plus two. In the bottom example you have iron with a plus three. Um, we don't know that just by looking over here, it's just iron on both in both of the examples. But when you look at the final formula between iron and sulfur, we know that this case iron had to be a plus two because sulfur is a minus two, and so one of each was sufficient. But in this case, iron was a plus three. Sulfur being a minus two, we had to balance out those charges with our subscripts. So when you have uh, two nonmetals, when you have transition metals, uh, there can be more than one possible answer for your product. 
So let's do an example here. We're going to do uh, this first one with a transition metal. So we just got finished looking at iron as a transition metal. Copper is also a transition metal. And copper can form two different two different um, oxidation numbers, two different charges, and that is copper 1 and copper 2. So we are going to do an example where we get, uh, where we have copper 1, and if that were the case, we would still have copper and we would still have sulfur. And it, the, the biggest change over here is we need to combine them. We need one ionic formula. So if we have copper with a plus one charge, and we know sulfur is in the same family as oxygen, which has a minus two charge, those charges are not balanced. And so we need to add subscripts to our formula in order to balance them. We actually need two coppers in order to balance the negative two on the sulfur. So there would be our ionic compound for copper one. And we would need to balance this. And so you could do a T-chart. Uh, this is a, a fairly simple one. So if you take a look, we have two coppers on our product side, but only one on the reactant side. So we would need to put a two out in front of that. And then the sulfurs are already balanced. So that one is balanced now. Now the other option for copper is copper two is another common ion that copper forms. And so the beginning part is still going to be the same. It's still copper and sulfur. But when you go to write your chemical formula, now we want copper with a plus two charge. And sulfur is not changing. It's still a minus two charge. So when we write our formula for this one, we're just going to have CUS since it's a plus two with a minus two. And this one's already balanced as is. There's one copper on each side and one sulfur on each side. So those would just be, you know, two uh, products that could be formed in this combination. Let's take a look at beryllium with oxygen. Notice that oxygen is written as O2, and you should know why that is. Oxygen is one of our seven diatomic molecules, and so it has to be bonded with itself. It cannot be alone. Now this one, beryllium, it's a metal, but it's not a transition metal. Beryllium's always going to have a plus two charge just from the family that it's in. And oxygen is always going to have a minus two charge because of the family that it is in. So when beryllium and oxygen combined, uh, we get beryllium oxide. And it's a plus two with a minus two. So it's written correctly now as BEO. The only thing we need to do is, is balance it. It's not a balanced formula yet. We have two oxygens on our reactant side, but we only have the one single oxygen on our product side. We don't have to have O2 here with the beryllium oxide because oxygen only is O2 when it's bonded to itself. In this case, it's bonded to beryllium, so we don't need that O2. Um, the subscripts come from the charges, and in this case, they cancel each other out. But we do have to balance the oxygens. We do need two on our product side. And since we're not allowed to change subscripts, we're going to add the two out in front. So that takes care of the oxygen. But you know, like sometimes happens, we end up changing the beryllium's as well. So our beryllium's that were balanced are now out of balance. So we have two beryllium's on the product side. We need to add a two out in front on the reactant side. And it's balanced. So that would be an example of a metal with a nonmetal. And then lastly, we want to take a look at what the reactants would be in this equation. So we have magnesium and nitrogen, and in order for those to combine together, they would have needed to be separate since it is a combination reaction. So we would have had to have magnesium, and we would have had to have nitrogen separately. Now what you need to remember is when you write nitrogen, you cannot write just an N by itself. Nitrogen will never be singular. Nitrogen is one of our seven diatomic molecules, and so we do need to write it as N2, Mg plus N2. And then as far as finishing this, we need to balance it. We have our two nitrogens on both sides, but we don't have magnesium balance. There's three here, but over on our reactant side, there's only the one. So we want to put a three out in front so that we end up with three magnesiums on both sides, and we have the two nitrogens on both sides. And that finishes um, up some practice problems there. Just a real quick review over combination.
As far as predicting what the products are, this is just a very generic way of writing a combination reaction. This could be an element or a compound, but we have two reactants, and notice that we always just have the one singular product. The reactants are normally two elements or two compounds, um, and the product always has to just be one single compound, so we're just adding you know, taking our two compounds and adding them together or taking the two um, single elements and reacting them together to get the one single compound.